we're going to continue on here this morning with Ryan Blaney, driver of the number 12 Team Penske Ford. We'll go right into questions for Ryan, who would like to start us off. Oh, start right up here in the front. Jared Haas with FrenchStretch.com. Obviously, Bubba Wallace got penalized, suspended this weekend with his incident with Kyle Larson. You're pretty good friends with Bubba Wallace. Did you talk to him this week, and what is your reaction with NASCAR's response to Bubba Wallace this week? Uh, yeah, I spoke to him. Um, I didn't speak about that, but uh, you know, it's NASCAR's decision. It's you know whatever they thought was the right thing to do in, in that kind of case. Um, you know, and that's I don't really speak on too many instances I'm not involved in, but uh, you know, yeah, that's that's all NASCAR's kind of judgment call. And uh, they kind of did what they thought was fit for it. We'll go to Bob. Um, Bob Pockers, Fox Sports. Um, NASCAR had the he had the Cole Custer penalty the week before, and now this penalty to Bubba. Does that have they sent any sort of message to drivers? And do you feel like when you would you change? Is there would you change any? Does it change any of your thoughts of what you might do in those situations? Um, not really. Uh, you know, I mean, I, I personally think it's it's good that NASCAR is putting kind of the law down, right? Like the hammer down on things that they think is wrong and they want to act, you know? I mean, that's it's the only way you can kind of police it, right? You have to you have to do those things. Um, uh, and, and at the end of the day, like I said, it's, it's their call. You know, if they see something that they don't like, um, I expect them to act on it. And they have the last couple of weeks. Um, so it doesn't approach the way I do anything, you know? I in my mind, uh, you know, you never think that, oh, if I do something malicious with intent or something like that, I can get away with it. You know, you always think there's going to be law and order. Uh, but I, I personally like that they're enforcing things. I think that's the way it should be, and that's why they're the sa sanctioning body. We'll go to Jordan. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Uh, what's week been like for you kind of moving past Las Vegas? Oh, uh, it was good. Uh Went grocery shopping and, and watched Dad test it at the dirt track at Charlotte, so that was fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, and then you get ready for, for here. I mean, it's, you know, you, you talk to everybody, uh, you know, when you go in the race shop on Mondays and Tuesday, and, uh, you know, you see your guys, and, and you know, you get uh, we get over things pretty quick. You know, you apologize for, you know, that was a, that's a single incident. Um, that's my bad last week. You know, I just tried too hard and ended up wrecking, and, um, you know, you, you you apologize for that and and we're one big group so they understand when i mess up and i understand when they mess up and, and we move forward from it so um you know we had that deal and then we just quickly turned to, to homestead and what we need to do here to you know run well try to win the race uh, and try to put ourselves in a good spot you know going to martinsville next week speaking of winning do you feel like you're in a must win scenario or do you feel like you can still punch your way in i don't know i don't think we're in a must win um you know after i wrecked last week i thought i was gonna be way more points out than what I actually am um, I get you know the stages we ran really good so luckily we had those um, but no I don't think we're in a must win you never know what can happen you know I think you can make up those points within the next two races but I, I'd sure like to win um, this weekend um, but I don't think we're in a must win no. um, wh wh what has stood out to you about Joy Legano on the 22 team this year and what they've been able to do anything yeah I mean I think they've just been really really consistent obviously they've you know winning as much as they have um, you know, showing up with with good speed. Um, and, and I think something that he and Paul Wolf do a really good job at is is working through the race, you know, especially from practice to the race. Like I sit in all the meetings, obviously, and, and sometimes they can be way off in practice and not happy with their stuff. And they do a really good job of talking through it and, you know, getting better for the race and kind of predicting what the track will do. Uh, you know, and you try, to, you try to learn from that, obviously, as much as you can. Uh, but yeah, they just they just do a great job of, of getting to where they need to be, even if they aren't in the best spot, um, you know, the day before or even at the start of the race. They do a great job of getting better. So I, you know, obviously commend them for that. And uh, they've they've really shown strength this year and and showed a lot of strength last week and earned themselves a spot at Phoenix. It'd be nice to join them. Let's go to Jerry. Jerry Jordan, KickingTires.net. Along those lines. What you say they do well, what do you need to improve on? And what, what are your strong points and, and weak points in the, in the car? Yeah. Um, you know, Joey and Paul are, are, are very 
well seasoned veterans of the sport. You know, they've been around for a long time and they, they do a great job of looking at the bigger picture of things. And um, something I try to try to do better is, is that exact same thing. Kind of look at the bigger picture, look ahead a little bit more than right in front of you um, in the moment. That's for sure. And uh, they do a really good job of that. And I think that's something that myself and and uh, you know, Jonathan's been on vacation for the last few weeks, but uh, Miles has done a great job of stepping in. Uh, but I think that's something that, you know, when Jonathan comes back, it's something he and I can really improve on too. You know, it's his first, really his first four of the year crew chiefing. So, um, you know, it's something I feel like we can really work on is, is trying to plan ahead a little bit better. And I think we do a good job at it now, but you know, I can, I can definitely do a better job at that uh, for sure. So um, like I said, you, you, you try to learn from people who are really good and, and surround yourself with good people and, and definitely have that. You just have to apply all those things. Next week with uh, Martinsville, you know, she got to get out of here, but do you see that race as calm or chaotic uh, next week? Yeah, I mean, I feel like that race always kind of gets pretty wild. Um, I hope the racing there is better than the spring. Uh, I don't know how it's going to be any better or different uh, from the spring. I don't understand that there's no changes really. So um, I, I think it'll be wild. I mean, you're going to have, you know, at let's say a playoff guy wins tomorrow, you're going to have six guys trying for two spots. So it, it can definitely be chaotic. Um, so, yeah, I think you just have to prepare yourself for anything. I mean, that, that race is obviously a long one, so you have to be there at the end of that thing. But you're going to be aggressive to, to kind of position yourself um, you know, towards the front, uh, qualifying, was, qualifying there was really important. Um, you know, Joey and I qualified really bad there in the spring and our race runs were great, but we got to, you know, third and fourth and you were a lot better than first and second, but you just can't pass them. You can't even get to them to lay the bumper to them. So, um, we'll see, but I, I feel like it's going to be pretty aggressive next week per, per usual. Do we have any additional questions? Holly? Holly Kane with the NASCAR Wire Service, kind of along those lines, and I, I asked um, earlier today other drivers, but d does it feel like the aggression is a lot more this season than it has been in past, or are we just interpreting that because of recent <laughs> events? But does it, for you personally, does it feel like it's any more aggressive in the playoffs than it has been? Um, yeah, a little bit. I, I feel like that's been the kind of the story all year. You know, I feel like we've talked about it all year of, you know, gosh, the racing has been so much more aggressive than what it has been in the past. Um, you know, because I, I just think the emphasis on winning is – it's weird because, you know, winning means the same now than what it did, you know, in the years prior when you win and you're in. You know, it's just the same deal. So but I think it's just uh, – <coughs> it's so hard to win and these cars are so sturdy that you can be more aggressive with these cars, you know, as far as laying the bumper to somebody, kind of dooring somebody. You're not going to get tire rubs and things like that. So – um, I think that kind of plays into it a little bit, um, you know, and I feel like restarts have been super aggressive because track position is so important. Like, you know, I feel like track position now is probably the most important that it's ever been because um, it's just hard to make it back through the field. Um, a, because the cars are so close, so it's harder to kind of get around guys and B, the cars can get put in situations to where they're in traffic. They're just kind of a nightmare. So. Um, it's, it's definitely put a bigger emphasis on trying to be aggressive. Uh, and the playoffs, I don't think the playoffs have been any like more aggressive than the regular season, uh, any different than like the regular season to postseason jump that we see every single year, kind of in the spike in aggression levels. So, um, yeah, I don't think it's been any, any more aggressive than it, uh, than I expected really. It's been, it's been fine in my, my book. So. Any final questions for Ryan? Thank you.